Traders, how are you? With Marcello. Today we're doing the recap of what happened in the markets last week so we can know the amazing crises that are coming our way. We have rivers in Europe at a point where they're shutting down nuclear power plants and cargo, which is super, super important. We have also uh, other things that I can't remember that I was going to include in this intro, but let's go ahead and get started. in the United States had their best month in July since 2020. This is after the strong jobs report that cast doubt on the Fed will be able to shift away from its increases in interest rates. For the week, the Dow was negative 0.12%, S&P 500 positive 0.36, with the NASDAQ being positive over 2%, with Canada being negative. In Europe, markets were mostly mixed. We had Russia and Turkey being the outliers, just most positive and negative. That's an emerging market, so a little bit more volatile. Latin America with Brazil also mixed. Africa and Middle East was mostly higher. Egypt notched over 7%, which is a good move for stocks. And then in the far, far east in Asia and Australia, they're generally higher as well, as we had not positive news, but generally good sentiment, let's say, about the overall economy. Bitcoin and crypto news on Monday, the SEC, which is the regulator in the United States, said that they charged 11 people with a fraudulent crypto pyramid Ponzi scheme. They raised over $300 million from, in, from investors globally, including in the United States. The name of the company was called Forsage, and they claimed to be a decentralized smart contract platform. Another big news, Coinbase, which is the biggest crypto exchange in the U.S., is now making an alliance with BlackRock, which is the biggest hedge fund in the world. They have over $10 trillion, if I'm not mistaken. And they want to be able to provide, BlackRock wants to be able to provide their institutional investors, which are big companies and funds and things like that, right? Companies and corporations and family offices, access to the crypto market via Coinbase's technology. One of the things that was really interesting as well, they're, they're already starting pilot projects to be able to track food and trace food with the blockchain technology. No, no, nothing wrong with that here. Why would we need to track all that stuff? It's not like they want to control us or anything. That would just be a conspiracy theory, right? Solana hack, over $200 million was stolen from a, a crypto bridge. It's, think of it, I know most of you still don't invest in crypto. Think of it how you, you send the money from one place to another. The name of the crypto bridge is called Nomad. But remember when everybody was saying, Solana's going to be the Ethereum killer. <laughs> And Bitcoin overall lower for the week. Most cryptos were. They went down 4.55% for the Bitcoins. And it's just uh, about 100, was well, 23,846. But obviously, you know, it's going to go up and down over time as well. Commodities, the Netherlands, the Dutch government declared a water shortage emergency after they had an unusually dry summer. Now, remember that the Dutch, they're the best builders of dams in the world because two-thirds of the Dutch are living below sea level. Droughts can become a serious problem due to the fact that they have most of their transport is through rivers and barges and they have dikes. And the problem is that a lot of times the way that they build these structures, they need the weight of the water to be able to stand where it is. Think of it like a dam, right? That, that kind of cement wall, even though it's not exactly how they do it in the Netherlands, but they do have them as well. So if they don't have that water or if the water level goes down significantly, they can start to have a lot of infrastructure problems. I'd like to remind you that Netherlands is the second largest exporter of food in the world. It's United States number one, Netherlands number two, Brazil number three. France and parts of England saw their driest July on record. There are situations now where due to the water shortages, you know, Italy as well, farmers are, are starting to have problems. They're starting to force restrictions on people as well. The rainfall in France was down an average of 84% last month. And the Rhine River, which is the border between France and Germany, which is a huge transport hub, now a lot of the cargo boats are dropping their cargo to 30% of what they were at full capacity because if, if they don't, they're going to hit the bottom of the river. Now, and another problem that's going to be very serious for, for not only France, but Europe as a whole, remember that France is the biggest generator of nuclear energy in the world. 
Well, now some of the rivers, it's getting so hot in France that they're not able to take the water from the river to be able to cool the system, you know, the nuclear cores and the technology that they have. So now they have to shut down power plants in France. France being normally a energy exporter, they're running at about 44% capacity as of last Monday, which is a huge problem because Europe has an entire energy problem now that Russia is starting to cut back the gas and other exports. Big big problem. Germany only has a few months to avert a shortage this winter, uh, uh, an energy crisis. 50% of the homes in Germany use natural gas for heating. And remember that the the one of the largest pipelines in the world for natural gas, which is the Nord Stream 1, which goes from Russia to Germany, they're capping it at 20% capacity. There's cities, large cities in Germany. Remember Germany being one of the largest exporters in the world fourth largest economy in the world. They're starting to shut down hot water. They're starting to shut down lights in public squares, and they're even setting up heating areas for people to stay safe from the cold because the most likely scenario is they're not going to be able to heat their homes. Spain, the great socialist republic of Spain, is restricting people from putting their ACs colder than 80 degrees Fahrenheit. I, if I'm not mistaken, that's 26.6 degrees Celsius, citing, quote, a real risk of a natural gas shortage during the coming winter. Perhaps we should look for ways to generate electricity instead of making people suffer. I couldn't, I couldn't be there in 80 degree heat, right? I, I would literally be sweating at 80 degrees. That's why I live here on the mountains of the amazing city of Medellin. Spain government has decreed that all shops, department stores, cinemas, hotels, and public buildings cannot have AC below 81 degrees Fahrenheit in the summer. That's 27 degrees Celsius, just a little bit below 27 degrees Celsius. And in the winter, they cannot heat above 66 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 19 degrees Celsius. I, I'm, I'm down for the winter. I'm not down for the summer. In the Socialist Republic of New York, drugstores are starting to put tin cans of Spam and ham, which are $3.49 and $3.99 in theft proof cases because of the crime wave that's that's appearing in the city get out of cities the preppers were right oil prices dropped over percent we're walking into a recession this is now starting to affect the demand one of the things that i thought was really fascinating is that the gas demand right now the gasoline demand in the united states is lower than july of the pandemic can you believe that Brent and WTI both ended July with their second straight monthly loss for the first time since 2020. And obviously soaring inflation, people are starting to buy less gas or starting to, you know, economize. And in addition to that, the higher interest rates and the possible recessions, everybody's starting to cut back quite a bit. Prices are now at six month lows. And in common with the U.S. part and, and other parts of the U.S. economy, we're in the US, we're not keeping up with the electricity generation with the demand. Since COVID, the demand of electricity has significantly increased and we're not generating more electricity. This is why, if I'm not mistaken, I believe November of 2020 during the pandemic years when I first mentioned to you guys, get ready for the shortages, the, the not only food shortages, but also the blackouts because it's literally ridding on the wall, right? And we're having extreme weather, the dry situation that we have out west, you know, we have all kinds of stuff going on. Imagine the kind of freak winter that we're going to have this year where people need to heat their homes and then, you know, we're just not going to have energy to do it. Gas demand, I mentioned that. Gold up 0.56 for the week, 1,777, while silver went down over 2%, down to $20.01. Financial and banking news, according to the St. Louis Fed, so the Central Bank of the United States called the Federal Reserve have, has offices around the United States. They're stating that the U.S. debt to GDP ratio, so the up total amount of debt divided by the size of the economy, which is called the GDP, is at 125%. And there's a lot of financial analysts that are saying that once you reach the 90% threshold, you have slower economic growth and it may trigger a public debt crisis. Here comes Conspiracy Marcello. I think they're doing this on purpose because when you're starving and you can't find a job, they're going to be like, hey, why don't, you, why don't you take this new system? It's just a one world currency with a little chip in your thing so we can track you and, and you, know, you can eat crickets to make sure that we have enough food for you. Other than that, 
The New York Fed is saying that U.S. household took more debt in 2000, excuse me, in quarter two. The amount of debt went up by $312 billion, and the credit card balances rose by 13%, which is the highest leap of over 20 years. Essentially, the explosion in inflation. I mean, think about gas, right? Gas has gone up, what, two, three times, almost four times what it was before. I think I remember paying $1.70, $2 a few years ago during the last president. Now it's over $4, $5, $6 in some places. So people can't afford to live anymore. So what are they doing? They're literally putting everything on their credit cards because they just can't afford it. Central Bank of Australia hiked rights by 50 basis points. England as well hiked by 50 basis points. They have their largest single increase since 1995 to try to rein in their inflation, which is at a 40-year high at 9.4%. Central Bank of India also rose by 50 basis points. It's the third increase in the current cycle. Their retail inflation is at 7%, which is higher than what they want it to be as well. And in the irony of the week, Italy is giving... 14.3 14.3 billion euros, which is about $14.5 billion on top of the $33 billion that they've already budgeted since January to give companies and people money, just free money, to try to balance out the surging cost of electricity, nat gas, and gas costs. This is one of the last things that the Prime Minister Draghi is doing after the he most likely is going to leave after the elections next month. But one of the most ironic things is that by creating so much money, the, that's the reason why we have all the increase in costs. So they're literally exacerbating the problem. Like, it's like Argentina. They, they voted for socialists 70 years ago. They were the richest country in the world in the 1900s. And now they have a financial crisis every 10 years because they just keep voting for socialists. It's like, what, what was that quote from, from Einstein? Oh, I was almost going to say Epstein. That quote from Einstein that was uh, the definition of stupidity is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result. If you print more money, what happens? You have more money, which means that the value of the money goes down, right? It's supply and demand. And so what do they do? They, they keep issuing more money because that's going to solve the problem. Political news. After the declaration of the monkeypox emergency declaration, not only in the United States, but also in California and San Francisco, San Francisco kink and fetish festival is to press on. Remember that the next time they want you to lock down in your home. Economic news, the labor market is finally cracking. The job openings went down by 605,000, which is the third biggest on record, third biggest drop on record. Only the situation with COVID was worse. The Chinese manufacturing PMI index showed a contraction in factory activity. So now the second largest economy in the world is starting to have a serious issue as well. The 19 Eurozone bloc posted an increase in GDP. Their economy expanded by 0.7% in quarter two above the expectations, but they're still expecting to walk into a recession after their manufacturing uh, index contracted as well in July. It's the first time that they did so since July of 2020. This is a situation where a lot of factories are forcing to stockpile unsold goods as the demand is cratering due to the situation with the economy. German retail sales logged an annual decline of 8.8% in June. Remember that the consumer spending number in most industrialized economies is the most important number when it comes to the economy. United States is almost 70%. I don't know the exact number for Germany, but I would bet it's more than 50%. So now if people are spending less money in retail stores, that's going to hit the fourth largest economy in the world, which is Europe, which is Germany. Europe as a whole is the third largest economy in the world. Corporate news, the great scam artists at Robinhood, I hate that company because I think that they're, they're legally scamming people essentially. They're reducing their headcount by 23% after, remember, Apple and Google and Facebook, all these other companies already announced either freezes or Uh, let goes of a lot of people. HSBC, which is the largest bank in Europe based on assets, dropped their income drop by 1.7 billion to 9.2. They only made 9.2 billion in the first half of of 2022. Isn't that horrible? Their their shares went up after they still made quite a bit of money. Moderna surged over 15% after they said that they had much better than expected quarterly profits. They're up 9% because their sales increased by almost $5 billion. And Tesla shareholders completed a vote authorizing a three-for-one stock split. 
Since this obviously benefits stockholders, the Tesla board of directors says that they're going to announce the date at their discretion. Shares are down over 6% so far this week. The stock is down close to 16% in 2022. Zillow, they're down 4.5% as well after they reported a drop in revenue of 23%. They still made money though. They made $164 million in the quarter, but their shares did fall anyway. And Amazon has announced that they're buying the iRobot for $61 a share. It values the Roomba maker at $1.7 billion. So I can listen while, they're, while you're cleaning too. You guys knew that, right? I don't have any of that stuff in my house. Trade news, the first grain shipment out of Ukraine has finally left. Over 26,000 tons of corn is headed to Lebanon. Le Lebanon. Uh, safely made it to Turkish water. So that's a good thing in terms of the food exports and the food situation that we're going to have soon. And obviously we had a huge escalation after Pelosi visited Taiwan. Remember that if you don't understand the situation in Taiwan, Taiwan says that they're an independent country. China says that Taiwan is part of China. So they don't want us being involved in Taiwan. And remember what happened was that Japan took Taiwan away from China in 1895. And that's why we had this huge spat. So China doesn't want U.S. visiting Taiwan because they say it's part of China, while Taiwan says that we're independent. Please don't come and take us. But as I mentioned to you guys before, I think it'll happen in this administration because look at what a great job they're doing in defending Ukraine. Technology, the Earth spun at its fastest speed on June 29th, which made it the shortest day, and scientists are wondering why. The preppers were right. Got something here on my neck. Don't know what it is, but I keep feeling it. U.S. Houses of Representatives. Uh, remember that Pelosi visit. I just mentioned that as well. Russia stated at the, the U.N. on Tuesday that the conflict in Ukraine doesn't warrant the use of nuclear weapons, but it could decide to use one in response to direct aggression by NATO countries over an invasion. Speaking of NATO, Sweden and Finland were officially... Uh, approved in the resolution in the Senate by 95 to 1 to join NATO. And some 200,000 Japanese residents are urged to evacuate on Thursday after there's been dangerous flooding, which can increase the risk of landslides. There was a huge, uh, I don't know what 25 meters is in, in feet, but we're talking about something like probably 250 feet. Hold on, let me do the math real quick for you. There was a huge, uh, not landslide, but a huge... Uh, socavon, uh, um, um, uh, just a hole in the ground. I forget what you call it in English. I always do the videos in Spanish first. So, all right, let's see, 25 meters to feet. Here we go. There was a, ho a huge hole that opened up in Chile that was 82 feet wide. And this keeps happening more and more frequently. I've been seeing it a lot more frequently in the news. Bridges are collapsing in Japan and also rivers are bursting their banks due to the exceptionally heavy rain. And in unusual facts this week, two thirds of the Great Barrier Reef in Australia is seeing its highest amount of coral in the, in the last 36 years. A lot of people still say that it's vulnerable due to mass bleaching. And obviously there's, uh, there's a, a starfish outbreaks which eat the coal essentially. And a rare hummingbird was rediscovered here in Colombia. It's the largest hummingbird in the animal kingdom. It's called the St. Marta Sabruing. And it's only found in the, in the coast, in the mountains, in the Santa, Sierra Nevada mountains in Santa Marta. That's the news for this week, guys. Let me know if you guys have any questions. Don't forget the preppers were right. Hope you're preparing. We'll see you next week.